Italian heritage is Arturo Mercante. On the right of your screen, the champion in white, Bolza Edwards. And Navarrete, the challenger, now on the right of your screen in dark blue with gold trim. Tim, we have a very small ring. It's only a 16-foot ring inside, which seem, should seem to be to Navarrete's advantage. He is the shorter of the two guys, and he does like the brawl. He won his North American title in May of this year, a 12-round decision over Johnny Sato, avenging an earlier defeat at the hands of Sato. He fought for the title against Alexis Arguello in April of last year and was stopped in the fourth round on cuts over the eye at this uh, same super featherweight. Arguello, of course, has since gone on to win the lightweight championship. Navarrete uh, claims he wasn't really well prepared for that Arguello fight, mentally or physically, and this one he's ready for. He was training to meet Gerald Hayes on the 25th of August, and suddenly the opportunity with Bazooka Limon pulling out because of illness, here he is fighting once more for the world championship. Tim and, Ed and Edwards fights against Limon and again against Bobby Chacon. He, he has the reach, he has the boxing ability, and yet he went, went and stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys. And both fights, he was in a little trouble at different times in the fight. I don't know why he doesn't use that big reach he has and that height advantage. He's the biggest junior lightweight I've ever seen. He looks like a junior welterweight. One thing is clear, as usually is the case in the championship fight. Uh, they're both in outstanding condition. Good left hand landed from Bose Edwards. And watching them work during the week, uh, just superlative conditioning. Bose Edwards trained by George Francis. Everite by Tony Rodriguez. Honolulu. Good left to the body by Navarrete, the challenger. He was born on February 14th, Valentine's Day in 1957. His mother wanted to call him Valentino. His father didn't like that. So he got Rolando. Under a minute to go, round one. Good combinations and a good left hand by Navarrete to the head of the champion, Rosa Edwards. And 30 seconds to go, round one. combination from the challenger knock Edwards back on his heels this kid means business in there well, we commented he's just like a caged lion this week very determined excited but very 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 determined <laughs> Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy live from Via Reggio Italy on the Italian Riviera this is round two of the WBC super featherweight championship bout Jose Edwards weighed in at 129 and a quarter. Navarrete at 129 and three quarters. Tim Navarrete really has good control of himself. He's very, very calm in there. Seems to know what he's doing. He's not, he's not overly awed by fighting for the championship of the world. He's in there trying to win that title. Now, perhaps having been in against Alexis Arguello, even though for only four rounds, has uh, helped his attitude fighting for the world crown again. Hands up. That's the way in the middle. Rose Edwards, the champion in white. Very charming, articulate young man. Good combination landed by the challenger again, and then good counter punching by the champion. Tim, here are two southpaws fighting for the championship of the world. Years ago, it was tough for a southpaw to get any kind of a fight. Now, here they are. Two of them fighting for the championship of the world. We see more and more southpaws all the time in boxing. Is that just a natural effect, or do you think uh, any great percentage of them are being turned around from right to left? Well, I think that the, the improvement in the amateur program and the fact that the southpaws are accepted in the amateurs and they manage to win a lot of titles, then when they turn pro, they stay that way, and they have a reputation, and they move up. It was an old prejudice against left-handers, was there? <laughs> what, is, what, what does somebody say when a southpaw should be drowned at birth? <laughs> that was Morris Hope, former junior middleweight champion, who made that comment. <laughs> We'd like to alert our stations along the line. There'll be a 30-second station break following this round. Navarrete is, is throwing a right hook underneath and a left hand straight on the chin. He's landed it four or five times. It's an effective combination. There it is again. Yes, 
than a minute to go. Round number two. Combination from Boza Edwards score. Right hand on the second trial landed. Toe-to-toe -to -toe in the champion's corner, under 30 seconds to go. There we mentioned Edwards likes that toe-to-toe -to -toe work. He has the height, he has the reach. Why he does that, I don't know. He's been successful at it, but one of these days... Coming to the end of round two, CBS Sports Saturday will continue after this word from your local station. Here we see Navarrete, Navarrete moving. There's that right hand and that straight left. That's been the effective combination in the fight so far. Back to live action, round number three, scheduled for 15. From Via Reggio, Italy. Beautiful evening here in this resort town on the Italian Riviera. Challenger on the left of your screen, Navarrete. The champion, Boza Edwards, in white. Here is corner, encouraging him to use the jab more. Good right hand to the body from the... Challenger Navarrete. Well, Mickey Duff in Edwards' corner was telling him to box, 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 and step back. But I've seen Edwards in three fights. Every fight has been a tough fight. He wins them, and he, he lost the one to Arguello, but every one is tough. He gives and he takes. And Navarrete's reputation is that he doesn't mind taking a punch to land one, which I don't particularly like. I like to see a guy get missed all the time and, and land punches. Low blow warning to Navarrete from the referee, Arthur McCanty, and... And uh, applause for the referee from the fair-minded crowd. Good right-hand counter from the champion. Under a minute to go, we're in round number three. There it was again, right hand, left, straight left hand behind it. That straight left hand gets in there all the time. Just landed again with a good right hand. Did Navarrete. Again, we'd like to alert our stations along the line. We'll be going to the 30-second station break following this third round. Under 30 seconds to go in the round. And some very stiff exchanges of punches. In the early going. Navarrete has been very, very sharp. Now banging well to the body. Just about 40 seconds to go in this round, Tim, and this has been an action round. The champion working on the challenger over by the ropes, and Navarrete holding on for the he, first he time. Hurt, he hurt Navarrete. As a wobble. There was more time left in the round than we indicated at the 32nd mark. A bad cut now over the champion's left eye. Typical Edwards fight. Every fight is a tough fight. Did not see how that occurred. The champion had his back to us at the time that occurred, whether it came from the head of the challenger or a blow, we can't tell you. Well, they're both landing. They sure are. It is a slugfest here in the third round. Navarrete swinging a little more wildly here as he sees the blood from the champion's face. CBS Sports Saturday will continue after this word from your local station. Looks like an angry cut. Both George corners working feverishly on those cuts, Gil. Yes, George Francis was working as an angry cut over Bose Edwards' left eye, but Navarrete was cut just at the bill over the right eye, and Tony Rodriguez is working on that. Let's see what how effective the cut men are. Well, I'd like to be able to report more accurately how they happened, but the champion's back was to us when his cut occurred. Navarrete's came right at the bell. And according to our timing, uh, that round ran about 3 minutes and 15 seconds. So we'll be watching the timings closely here by the Italian timekeeper at uh, ringside. Tim, with all the punches that have been landed, I would take an educated guess that they were from punches, despite the fact that most cuts come from headbutts. These guys are really landing. Navarrete just landed the combination. 
the challenger on the right of your screen from Honolulu. Born and raised in the Philippines. Rosa Edwards now lands a heavy combination in the left hand wobbled. Never retained a good right hand from the champion. Another combination scored. Rosa Edwards on the attack kill. I think he senses that that cut is serious and he's, he's got to try and get the challenger out of here. Yes, he does. He, he must have been told in the corner he has to get him out because that is a bad cut, Tim. The blood's going to go down into his eye and it's going to block his vision. It's going to make even a bigger handicap for him. This kid keeps landing that same combination. Right, right hook and then straight left hand. Both fighters are bleeding profusely right now. Again, they're toe to toe. Edwards is hurt. Tremendous right hand from the He challenge. is hurt. Navarrete staggered the champion with that punch. It's champion swinging wide. There, there he goes. goes. The right and the left. There it goes. Navarrete. That right hook, left, straight, left hand has been effective since the beginning of the fight. That's effective again. He's hurt. There is no three knockdown rule in this championship fight. Referee he is hurt right now, Tim. He's in trouble. This kid should get right off. He shouldn't stand there and pose. There, he just nailed him again. Jose Edwards trying to punch inside. Under a minute to go now in round number four. Tim, if he, gets, in trouble. if he gets nailed with another big one now, he's going because he's still hurt. He there he goes. Down, he goes. There he goes, Tim. Right hand from Navarrete. Just after. There's his, there's his second. Working. All over. He made the count, but well, he is in big we trouble. Mentioned, we mentioned those opportunities. Now it's up to the referee. It's up to the referee to see what he's going to do. He's down twice. He is, he is in serious trouble. Ring. Navarrete sensing the opportunity to this world championship. He's missing these big opportunities, Tim, if that bell rings. Got to land another big one. Champion still wobbling. If anything that hits him now, he's going to go. Any solid punch on the chin. Coming near the end of this fourth round. He's like a drunken man on a ship. The bell has sounded. And the champion He's in bad trouble. He doesn't round. know where he is, Tim. Doesn't know where he is. Referee's overlooking at him. George Francis has some job. He has to work on the cut and they have to revive him. We mentioned about these opportunities, kids that are in shape in the gym, and this kid, Navarrete, is taking full advantage. The champion still looks in very bad shape in his corner. George Francis, Mickey Duff, working him over there, still trying to get the mouthpiece out and finally do. But he is in extreme difficulty here. You see this again, a right and a left, sending him to the canvas for the first time. There's the right. No, that's not it yet. Watch it again. There it is, right there. Right left combination. Two excellent punches from the challenger. And here's the second knockdown. All right, here we go again. He's in trouble now. There's that same combination. Right hook, straight left hand. You know, the champion had just landed a good left hand to the head of the challenger, but he just got the combination right back that sent him down. We are live going into round number five. Scheduled for 15, but there's the same combination like against him. Started right out with the right hook, straight left hand, and it landed. Jose Edwards fighting to retain his title against this Number eight ranked Rolando Navarrete. Tim, we mentioned before that Edwards had three tough fights in a row. He had the fight with Aguello, then another war with Lamone, and another one with Chacon. They have a way to catch up to you after a while. He is still in difficulty. No oh, yes, he is. No question about it. This kid, and the other kid knows it. He's winging. Navarrete, on the other hand, looks very composed, perhaps a little bit on the weary side. The cut over his right eye, not a factor at this point. Rosa Edwards fighting gamely here in this fifth round. Sato just shook his... Navarrete just shook his arms to him just to loosen himself up. He's feeling a little tight. He knows the opportunity is there. They talk about winging. He really missed that roundhouse left well, hand. See, now he's looking to throw one punch at a time. He was successful when he was trying to... when he was putting the punches together. Now he's trying to punch a little too hard and it's slowing his timing off. It's got to be two punches at a time. Rose Edwards buying some time here, getting the legs back yeah. underneath it. There's a right hand landed. That's the Good way. Good combination he has to do it. again. That's Navarrete. Really, 
When he tries one punch at a time, Navarrete is not effective. But it's that combination. Oh, big right there hand. He goes. That should be the end, but Bo Edwards. He'll get up from this one, Tim. Survive. Yes, he's getting up, Tim. He's going to get up. No, I'm wrong, Tim. The fight is over. We have a new champion. Rolando Navarrete from Honolulu, Hawaii. In the fifth round with a tremendous right-hand knockout of Cornelius Boza Edwards. And a new champion who was here as a substitute for the former champion, Bazooka Limon. Getting this opportunity out of the blue. They had offered to fight anybody in the top ten. It turned out to be number eight, Rolando Navarrete, and he is the new WBC Super Featherweight Champion on a warm summer night in Via Reggio, Italy. A young man's dream has come true. He started fighting as a professional at the age of 16. And what a poignant moment for his promoter and advisor, Sam Ichinos from Honolulu. Hotel. See the left hand to the body? And that makes him drop his hands and then down he goes. Tremendous display by this young...